It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I think we have a good one today. It is a Friday. We made it to the end of yet another work week and we get to listen to music together, y'all. It is a Masterpiece Friday and for the first time on the channel, we are listening to music by the band Muse. Over the past several months, I have had many people writing in asking me to review music by this band, and today is the day. We are starting with their song, Exogenesis Symphony. And from what I have spot checked of it, we are in for a real treat today, y'all. So sit tight. We're going to have a good time together. Uh, this piece, Exogenesis Symphony, is from their fifth album called The Resistance. It was released in 2009. It is written by Matt Bellamy. Uh, Matthew Bellamy, over a period of years, it looks like he was writing uh, this and working on it. It takes up the last three tracks of the album, but it is thought of as one complete piece. And as I read in, this is based on an apocalyptical future uh, where Earth is uninhabitable and humanity needs to save itself by sending a group of astronauts into space to spread our genomic material. Right. This is a, a storyline and a trope that that I have seen often. Right. We we look at how we treat our planet and we think of its dwindling resources and exploding human population. And we like this is unsustainable. And so our minds come up with these stories about how humanity in the future might need to work on our own behalf to save ourselves and to save our species. So uh, I am interested in taking a look at it. Uh, we've got Matthew Bellamy on lead vocals, guitars, keyboards, and synths. Uh, Christopher uh, Volstenholm is on bass and backing vocals. Dominic Howard is on drums and percussion. And they have the Edodia Ensemble, which I believe is a collection of orchestral musicians. So let's dive right in, y'all. This entire piece is... Uh, between uh, 13 and 14 minutes, I believe. I've got it segmented into the first part, the second part, and the third part. And let's take a look and see what we've got. This is Exogenesis Symphony uh, by Muse. Here we go. Tremolos and strings. Ooh. It's almost like an augmented chord. It's the most truly symphonic sound that I think I can remember hearing from a band this entire time I've been doing this. This is great. Listen to that. That augmented fifth that resolves back into those chords. That's just a minor chord. Tension release, tension release is what they've got going on. Landed on A. A diminished. Whoa. C sharp diminished. Yeah. Listen to that. That is cool. That's a four chord. Back to one. Really neat arpeggiations of those sounds. Listen to just the immensity. Immensity, is that a word?
aping my soul, you stole my overture, trapped in God's program. Oh, I can't escape. Who are we? Where are we? When are we? Why are we? Who are we? Why? Another diminished chord. Back to D minor. That was C sharp diminished to D minor. This is radness, y'all. here are I can't forgive you and I can't forget. I wish I could hear the vocal texture a little bit more presently in the uh, in the mix. Without the words here it would be difficult for me to get what he's saying, what he's singing. Up a half step. B flat, which will be flat six. There is a jump to C sharp diminished. It resolves up to D minor. And that's the end of the overture. Okay, y'all, the gauntlet has been thrown down. Whew. That was part one. That was part one. As I look at these lyrics, uh, they are addressing the existential questions, right? That uh, arise as we ponder our existence, our future, our past, and what it all means. Uh, and they are, un we, you know, the lyrics, the point of view, unforgiving. I can't forgive you and I can't forget. So we're looking at all of this and we're going, what the hell? Y'all, what is it all for? What does it all mean? Uh, they're asking the big questions. And uh, let's see what cross-pollination, the second part of this, has in store for us. goes like this. Piano and octaves. They're in the same key. Ooh. Cool, they went down to C, and then C goes down to A flat as a chromatic third, and then back to C. So A flat C's and E flats to the F minor chord before they get back to C major. It's a darkening and a brightening, that chromatic third relationship. Then C is dominant to F. above the crowds and wade through toxic clouds. Breach the outer sphere. The edge of all our fears. We're leaving Earth now, y'all. talking to our bold explorers or representatives that are going out to find our new home, right? Cool. 
you must rescue us all. major okay back to the chromatic thirds between C and A flat hmm the downbeats they're giving us dissonance on the downbeat it's and they and they resolve into these sonorities and it's still all of this tension and release, tension and release that feeds us emotionally as we're listening to all of this. Hmm. And it ends major on a C chord. The, the dominant, the G chord that preceded it had that again that uh, hearkening back to the overture that uh, augmented sound for just a second before it resolved into itself and um, and finished y'all this is I'm impressed I am enjoying myself quite a bit uh, so in this second part called cross-pollination we are now past the existential crisis <laughs> of the overture and we're sending our brave representatives out into the cosmos to find a new home for us it reminds me of the story of interstellar uh the movie by uh, christopher nolan but as i recall this one what year was this put out this was 2009 interstellar wasn't until like as i recall the middle of the 2010s like 2014 2015 so this precedes interstellar uh, which is a very similar storyline. And speaking of that, I chatted with Aryan uh, Lucasen yesterday, an interview that I posted on the channel, and I even I did a um, a reaction to his song "Lost Children of the Universe" from the new Revel and Time album uh, from his Star One project, and it's on the same topic. In fact, uh, Aryan's uh, piece takes Interstellar as a source material, as inspiration for what he uh, was writing. Uh, this one, uh, it comes before Interstellar, but like I said at the beginning, it's it's not far-fetched to think about, right? If you are thinking about uh, the Earth and uh, the way that humanity is treating the Earth, how we have treated the Earth, and we realize that humanity, uh, at least our numbers are going up and the resources on Earth are going down. And at some point, that's going to be a problem that we have to solve. And so you start coming up with narratives for what would that look like. And it drives the art. It's very intriguing. Quite a bit. Uh, I need to get to the last part of this, y'all. It's called Redemption. And it goes like this. Here we go. Again, starting with piano. One to major three to six. That B. Okay, hang on a second. I want to restart the... Hang on, hang on. I want to restart this um this section uh part three because uh what i hear so far and it, it's just something theoretical that i want to get out of the way uh but it shows you how you can use uh the same note uh, as sort of expanding on or lengthening time our our perception of time and then change the chords underneath it so uh, he's got a g chord uh, and then a B major chord, and then an E minor chord, and the B is in all of those chords. Uh, here's the start of this again. Here we go. Major chord. There's a 
is the B, the third of that chord. The root of that chord, it's five, seven of six. Now it's the fifth of that chord, the E minor chord. Even the major seventh of the C chord. of all of the um, great classical music that has sonorities and textures like this that I think they're taking inspiration from and I'm not mad about it it's a lovely sound Parallel minor, G minor, down to flat six, E flat. Where are we going, y'all? B flat. The bow's getting... So they moved to parallel minor and into flats. And the motion is getting more... start over again. There's a four, an A flat chord. Why can't we just start it all over again? Just let us start it over again. Extended dominant on D. It's our last chance to forgive ourselves. And a resolution. G, where they started this movement. And there's the B chord, B major, moves to relative minor, E minor. Mm. It's an example of how major keys can be mournful and hopeful at the same time. If you're expressing sadness or grief or conflict, it doesn't always have to be in minor keys. And that's going to be how it ends, y'all. I have waited way too long to dive into that piece. It's a Friday. It's, uh, you know, my, my Friday evening, uh, listening, just kind of hanging out and just, just relaxing at the house. This is going to be on the list. I do believe my friends, what a gorgeous piece of music. I am not familiar with, uh, muse with their music. Uh, I know that they're from Britain, 
and uh, they've been around a while and uh but that really impressed me um i'm uh very very uh taken by that we've been listening to some great stuff uh recently they said something in this uh in this last little bit in redemption the verse uh, or the lyrics are are very short for this particular piece or this section it says, let's start all over again. Why can't we start it all over again? Just let us start it all over again. Three times in a row, please. And then a promise, and we'll be good. <laughs> uh, this time we'll get it, we'll get it right. It's our last chance to forgive ourselves. And that's an interesting line. Uh, forgiveness seems to be a needed ingre uh, ingredient in, uh, in moving forward or uh, in charting a, uh, a new path we uh, we need to forgive to give closure to um, the knowledge of our past so that we can effectively start over with better knowledge uh, and renewed energy and uh, and purpose it reminds me of a song I recently heard by Marillion called be hard on yourself which was on the climate crisis, which I think is related to this, right? It's about how we treat the earth. Uh, and when they said, be hard on yourself, that seems to be in opposition to what Muse is saying um, uh, with their, it's our last chance to forgive ourselves. But I think that uh, even though those seem diametrically opposed, that they're actually on the same two sides of the, of the same, the same sides of the same coin. Um, Part of uh, forgiving ourselves, I think, involves being hard on ourselves uh, first uh, and recognizing our uh, failure or our uh, inaction or not living up to the responsibility or expectations that we set for ourselves. Then, once we recognize that uh, and after we get our ego out of the way um, and actually learn something, uh, then we can seek to move beyond the situation with forgiveness and, and newness of purpose. That's how I connect these things uh, together. It's, it's all part of the same coin and it just involves getting out of your own ego and, and stop trying to figure out who to blame for it and just solve the problem, right? Work the problem. And, and I think we'll be okay. I have hope. I still have hope. I know there is a lot of, of um, tension and conflict and fear and trepidation and all these feelings in the world right now, especially with the conflict um, in Ukraine. And, um, and our hearts go out to everyone involved in that. Um, but it's... The, the artists, these musicians that give us these pieces and these lyrics and these sounds that allow us time to ponder these things, it very much helps me. And as I go through these and I verbalize my thoughts, that also very much helps me. So it's a cathartic thing for me as much as I hope it is a cathartic thing for all of you as we are contemplating what this... Uh, art means for us and how to respond to it and how to emotionally connect with it. Uh, wow, what a masterpiece. Great for a masterpiece Friday, and I am glad to have listened to it today. The band is Muse. The song is Exogenesis Symphony, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I hope that y'all did as well. It's been a, a fun week here, lots of great music and some conversation, and we got more coming up in the future. Until then, thanks for hanging out with me today. We will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.